S'more stick? Check. Flashlight? Check. Happy camper cap? Check. Let's go! Let's go! Hello, Hello happy, happy travelers. travelers! Welcome to our car. We are currently in transit to Jetty Park Campground. What? Now, why is that of interest? Because Jetty Park is right, right, right next door to Port Canaveral, which is the number one rated cruise port. Of course. That's pretty cool because we're going to show you basically what it's like to camp at Port Canaveral to camp at a cruise port. So we can show you what it's like. We're going to see some ships sail out today and it should be a lot of fun. Our first look at what ships are in port today and we got some big ones on the docket. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Someone in the truck in front of us just went through this red light. Not like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna gun it and try to make it. It it was red. It had been red. <laughs> like, solid red. And he was just moseying about. Like, I'm just gonna go. I don't know if they were looking at the Harmony. I can't blame them. You know, other than safety. Uh, the Harmony is quite beautiful, but... They, they had uh, no care or cause for concern with that red light. Well, if you're not used to Florida, welcome to Port Canaveral. Dude. Now, if you are curious of where you can enter into Jetty Park, that is Terminal 3 of Port Canaveral. And the entrance is right up this way. So there, there's your frame of reference of how to get to Jetty Park Campground. All the way down at the end. So something important to note, at least for right now, we are camping, we're staying here, so we have a reservation for that, which you would want a reservation if you're going to be camping, right? But beyond that, just coming in for the day also currently requires you to have a reservation. You have to purchase your admission to the park ahead of time. And in fact, they're only doing online sales right now. There was a sign back there that said, do not enter without uh, admission purchased and there's a little loop right there and it says if you don't have a ticket turn here and they have a big a-frame sign with a QR code that you can scan and purchase your admission into the park they're not doing sales at the ticket booth right now interesting yeah do you know how much it is to come for the day uh, I want to say it's around like 16 17 bucks if I'm not mistaken it's pretty cool because even though we have been to Port Canaveral and specifically Jetty Park many 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 times we We've never camped here or stayed overnight. Never been through this gate. <gasps> Ooh, yeah, so they, um, Got the code. we gave them our reservation number at the booth and they gave us like the, the key code for the gate and it worked obviously. And then they say, <laughs> we, uh, we check in, um, at the camp store. Yeah, straight ahead to the camp. Wow, that's a really squeaky vehicle. <laughs> uh, squeaky vehicle gets the grease. Here's a look at the camp store. Oh, they even have like swim shirts and stuff. That's pretty cool. They have some like very general kind of like camping RV equipment. Oh, they even have some books and like some puzzles and kind of like board games you can use. That's pretty neat. They have some pins here. Looks like a coaster set, little shot glasses, a little miniature ship. Even got some like Tervis style tumblers and mugs, glasses, things like that. You can get some vinyl stickers you can put on your camper here. Magnets. This looks like a bracelet's made from ocean trash and plastic, which is cool. Picture frames, even got Christmas ornaments in here. And then little, got like a food section here. So you gotta have stuff to make s'mores. Chips, various kinds. They even have some big bags of chips here. Big canisters, candy, nuts, and then different things like condiments and spices, hot chocolate mix, granola bars, cereal, coffee. Got a whole apparel section here. Fishing shirts, t-shirts, nice big hats. Also have some like umbrellas and flags here. Little notebooks, hats, things like that. Even some utensils and like cookware kind of stuff here, can openers and things. Plates, aluminum foil, propane canisters, 
tissue, soap, glasses, medicine, all kinds of stuff. Sunglasses over there. They even sell some firewood in here. And also some fun stuff like balls and uh, boogie boards, lounge chairs, of course sunscreen, and then different water and sand toys available here as well. And the check-in desk right over there. And they also have ice outside of the store here, as well as a bike rack. So, cabin 319, that's us. And they even gave us this huge <laughs> key ring thing. You what? will not lose it. But yeah, we're staying in a cabin. Check it out. Look how cute it is. Just a little cabin. I love the color scheme of it. It's like a Christmas cabin. Oh, that's right. Ta-da. Cabin 319. <laughs> it's a little teeny guy. It is tiny, but it's really cute. So, right when we come in, well, we do have a fire extinguisher and broom dustpan there and an outlet down below, but we do have twin bunk beds here. So the bottom and the top, ladder built in. Got some hooks right there too, if you wanna hang something up. And then in the back here is the bathroom. Now it is a half bath only. So you do have the toilet with the storage up above and some artwork on the wall towel holder there, no towel, <laughs> soap and water, the vanity, there were light switches over here, another outlet, the lights up above, the mirror, even some storage down below. Then we look back towards the entrance, got our queen size bed there. Little, I like the little tables right. on the side. It's a little nightstand. A little nightstand table built into the wall. With outlets. Yes, outlets on either side, which is always handy. And something we'll love here in Florida, there is a ceiling fan up above with lights as well. So very nice to have. Loving all the windows and the door and the walls around. Got some artwork over there and uh, air conditioning, which is super, especially here in the summer in Florida. Tons of outlets. I, I don't want to keep going on about the outlets, but I'm just stunned how many there are. You have a refrigerator here, more outlets. It looks like a cable input, but they did say that there are no televisions and no, uh, no cable here. We do have a bench over here with some linen bags. I'm assuming this is for our bedding. And then it's kind of also like a closet area because it's a shelf and a hanging rack. There's also some hooks here and a long mirror with a garbage can below. And the fridge is actually actually cold. <laughs> it's way colder than a cruise fridge. <laughs> way colder than a cruise fridge. So yeah, not bad, right? I love it. Do you want top bunk or bottom bunk? Oh boy, <laughs> decisions, decisions. <laughs> Now our particular cabin is right here next to a pedestrian gate that you can use to go out to a parking lot, over to like the beach store area, and then out to the beach itself through there. So it's kind of nice that you're right here, um, but you have that access, but of course you will have people coming through. They do have a, a water connection out here as well, should you need it. And it looks like some plumbing and electric. <laughs> nice little green space here on the back. And then you do have a grill out here on the left side of the cabin, kind of built in standard grill that you would find at pretty much any campsite or anything like that, so. Oh, we have a grill. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. We have our own little private grill. Can't uh, argue with that. Has not been cleaned, but that's okay. It has not. <laughs> if we decide to use it, we'll clean it, but yeah. uh, maybe we want to bring a grill brush with you. <laughs> and I wanted to kind of go over the map to show you exactly where we are. So this is where we drove in. That's where you enter the park. And normally we would have come around here and gone to here, there's that parking lot because see our cabin is circled there. That's the parking lot I was talking about the, in the, uh, the changing rooms and things like that. And then you can go over here to the fishing pier, come out here to the channel where the ships go through, or you can go out this way to the beach. There's a beach out here, right out to the ocean. Um, there's a public boat ramp over here, actually kind of outside of the park. And then there's the office and camp store. So we actually came in, we turned here and went right in to the camp store. So this is the whole campground section here. And you see the little red houses, much like Monopoly. <laughs> Those are the cabins. And then they have various kinds of campsites that are allow per different permissions for different like uh, equipment and setups. So some are tent, some are RV. They even have inlet sites here out on right by the channel. Those are like full sun. I don't think there's any kind of hookup or anything, but only for RVs. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. So this is where we're at right here, kind of all the way at the end. So we'll have very easy access to the beach or if we want to go over to the pier or come out to the channel to watch the ships go out.
not to keep showing you paperwork, but um, here's like just some general like rules with the cabin and just uh, Jetty Park in general. Fees you could incur if, um, you know, if you left the place really dirty or whatever. They do have Wi-Fi um, available, which is really awesome. And a very big rule is that no pets are allowed. Um, so that's why you couldn't bring Bandit. Um, but yeah, in case this is helpful to you. I mentioned there was no towel in the towel holder. All the towels are in the red bag here. Also, we talked about how it's a half bath, but if we look back at our map here, we will see that they do have uh, showers located at various spots. There's one there, there's one there. There's technically changing rooms out here by the beach. I don't know that those actually have showers, but we do have the two options here. And in case you're wondering, this AC works good, like really good. This definitely beats our original plan, which was to sleep in our car. And I bring that up because they actually will permit you to sleep in your car if you're in a tent site and you have a tent erected on the site. Now they told me they don't care if you actually sleep in the tent, they're cool with you sleeping in your car, but you must have that tent set up. You can't just do car sleeping, so keep that in mind. Now we are only staying here for one night um, and we're really lucky that we get to do that because normally you would not be able to just stay one night in a cabin. That's right, usually cabins require a two night minimum. However, I happen to look online, last night was sold out, uh, tomorrow night is sold out. It was only tonight that was available. So I called him up and I said, listen, I know it says two night minimum, but you only have this one night. And they said, no problem, we can override it if that's the case. Now, if there was a second night available on either end of your stay, they would make you do both. Right. So if you only see one night available for a cabin, like if it's sandwiched between like being booked and um, like the online, it won't let you do it, like call them and, and they might be able to work with you. But the actual campsites, like the RV campsites, you can do just one night. Oh, and I know the biggest question we're probably going to get, everyone's probably wondering how much, how much was the cabin? It's about 150. I think they do have seasonal rates here depending mm -hmm. on the time of year, but it, ballpark that about 150. I know that might be kind of a lot for like a camping cabin but one this is a really popular campground and two you are literally like at Port Canaveral you're like in Port Canaveral essentially and the beach is right there and the so... beach is right there so I don't know I mean if you got a hotel like this close to a cruise terminal or this close to a beach it would probably be more um or the same um so I don't know, so far I really like it. We'll, we'll continue with this evening and then we'll tell you if, you re if we really think it's worth it. But so far I'm really happy with it, but I do want to go and explore more of the campsite. Let's do it. Remember how we said that Jetty Park is like a really popular campground? <laughs> <laughs> it is packed to the gills. They stack them in here. The only place in Jetty Park that seems to be deserted is the tent area because it's summer in June and nobody dares to. That's a bad mix all around. It's not just heat. You got to think thunderstorms. Humidity. Yeah. It's... Bugs. <laughs> oh, buddy. Now, I think part of what factors into the cabin prices that we were talking about earlier is that there are only eight of them and they're kind of like scattered around like in between like the like the RV or like tent sites. So I think that's part of the price of the cabins is that there's not many to be had. Do you smell that? Do I smell what the rock is cooking? I smell someone cooking, if that's what you're referring to. And it smells good. It is grilled scents and they smell very flavorful. The charcoal has been lit and people are getting ready to grill on this here Father's Day. Sunday, there's a lot of activity because it's a busy time. I wanted to stop here for a second to show you they do have pavilions that you can rent for the day. And they also have horseshoe pits set up as well as a shuffleboard court. And that's all right next to the bathhouse. I don't think there's anyone in here. Let me show you what the bathhouse is like. So of course you have your standard toilets and urinals, but you also have the showers in there with the doors that close, not just the curtains. So you don't have full, complete privacy, but it does close it off. and block the view there. So three showers in the bathhouse and there are two bathhouses on property. 
I like this. These people have hung up a parrot in the tree. That's cool. So right inside the entrance of the campground here, just inside the gate, we noticed this little driveway that says, you can see on the sign, tents 35 to 45, no RV traffic. And I can see why. It's kind of got a canopy of trees here. This is much tighter quarters than anywhere else in the campground. But it's nice because if you are tent camping, you have all of the shade. You'll be out of the sun most of the day. I mean, this is like a true canopy setup here. So something to consider with these sites. If you are going to tent camp, this is probably the area and the sites to do it at. Now, the majority of the sites are going to have like full hookups. So like sewer, water, electric, and all that. There are some exceptions though. So definitely if you are camping here, like check out each individual spot and like on the map, online and stuff so you know what you're getting and what ampage and all that kind of stuff and you see they have a fire pit area over there with built-in benches and a nice brick built-up fire pit we're gonna head to the other side of the campground this area is gonna look a lot more familiar and over here at the area where we usually come to film like there's the store and the bathrooms and stuff over there and then out here to the fishing pier the beach just on the other side of those bushes and then we have our inlet in our channel here where the ships will sail in and out of. Lots of people here, lots of action going on. So we're gonna set up a spot and watch some ships sail out. So this area here is what they call the inlet camping, inlet RV sites, which I don't think have any hookup whatsoever. They are full sun. You can see it says inlet RV sites on the thing there. No day pass parking, violators will be towed. So they do have these spots here, but it's kind of just straight up. You can run a generator for certain hours of the day, but then at night you have to shut it off. And we have set up our chair. Oh, nice lounge action. <laughs> right here on the inlet. This is actually a really good spot because the ships will be coming right there. And so you'll kind of get a great view, get the front as they start to come along and then from the side as they go by and then the back as they go past. And something I want to point out too is if you're ever over in this area and you want to see a ship sail out, but you don't want to pay to get into Jetty Park or you can't, there is a public boat ramp right here, which technically is supposed to be used for people, you know, who are putting boats into the ramp. But there is an area actually, there's like parking over there and there's an area that you can walk out to right there. You actually see across, they have some picnic tables with little pavilions over them. And there's this whole area, you can see all those people out there who are just standing or sitting on the kind of the bulkhead. So that's like open public access. You can walk right there and there's really no charge for it. So if you wanna see a, a ship sailing out and you can't get into Jetty Park for some reason, that might be a consideration for you. But for now, we'll settle in. Our first departure of the day is headed our way, Harmony of the Seas. Look how jam-packed the wings are off the solarium with people watching the sail away. It is a pretty good spot though, I gotta say. Out on deck's pretty busy too. Look at the balconies, man, there's lots of people. Everyone on board Harmony of the Seas is ready for a great week. Look, everybody's waving. Oh yeah, some people whistling. Happy Father's Day! Oh yeah, happy Father's Day. There you go. They're making all kinds of noise. They are ready. It's a lively crowd. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little jealous. Not gonna lie, a little jealous. <laughs> this is really cool because usually, like, we're on the other side of things. You know what I mean? Oh, right. So it's kind of it's kind of cool being like in reverse and like waving to them, like, oh, have a good sailing, just like people have done to us, like so many times. Reciprocating. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> you may be thinking, Hoffman's, you conveniently ended up here right before Harmony passed through the channel. How did you know? Do you have psychic powers? <laughs> Do you have inside knowledge? How did you know when Harmony was going to be passing through? And the answer is... There's a, just kind of two answers. So one, there's the Cruise Mapper app, which is really cool. Um, because you can do this worldwide and I'll show you where all the different cruise ships are. So you see here it says Port Canaveral. I still see the Davina and Oasis parked over there. So the other thing I did was a quick uh, search on Google to find the schedule for the ships today so we would know when they were leaving. So we could kind of see this here. 
June 19th. So we have the Divina, Oasis, and Harmony with their arrival times and their departure times. So we see Harmony 16.30 or 4.30 past us right around five o'clock. And actually it's cool because it notes Oasis is just here for a port of call. We talked about how Harmony, Oasis, and Divina are sailing out today, but we did not talk about the real star of this show. The MVP. The Victory Casino Cruise. MVP stands for Most Valuable Profit. Oh no. Check it out, there's a giant sea turtle that just swam up. It's got like a bunch of barnacles on its shell. Oh no, it went under. Well, you got a little bit of it there. And next up on the departure schedule, the MSC Divina. <laughs> Someone's getting scolded. Uh oh, spaghettios. We drove back to our little cabin because it's going to be about three hours until Oasis set sail. So we thought we'd go to the beach for a little bit and show you where that's at. Let's go to the beach, Nikki Minjaj. Pretty easy for us. That's our cabin right there. We just turn and there's a gate right here that we can go through and takes us to a parking lot. No, we go across and there's a walk across right to the beach. When we were walking up, I glanced at the, the rules and regulations. I thought this said no fries. Oh, that would be too bad. <laughs> no potato products of any kind. And welcome to the beach here, outside of Jetty Park. Miles and miles on down that way. And it would be miles and miles up this way. Except you have the jetties and the aforementioned jetty park because the inlet for the cruise ships is uh, right there. And there's a view from the beach up top. What? Up top? Yes, we're out on the pier right now. Oh, a turtle! A turtle! Oh, yes. Good spot. Come on, zoom. Oh, there it pops up! There you are! There we go! Oh, you're such a cutie! You're much smaller than the uh, friend we saw earlier. Yeah, they got some nice color on it, though. <laughs> Hello, friend! Oh, and I forgot to mention it earlier, but they also have a playground right across from the channel here, from the inlet. Nice, pretty good size playground, actually, with some picnic tables and grills as well. And they even have some solar panels up there. Whoa, look at the sunset, it's so cool. We left the campground for a minute because we were hungry and luckily there's a Publix only five minutes down the road. Back in our spot where it has gotten very dark as the sun sets and we wait for our last contestant of the evening, our favorite cruise ship in the world, Oasis of the Seas. And on the menu tonight, fried chicken and chips because we decided we were too lazy to grill Flashing. Lights, 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 lights. Look at that beautiful night aesthetic. And I don't even have to tell you. That's trademark off on Happy Travels. I didn't have to tell you and I told you anyway. back to the cabin to unwind for the evening but I wanted to show this that there are lights on the porch that 
illuminates your area and kind of like your front yard and your picnic spot like really really well actually so if you wanted to like you know dine outside at night like you have that option it's very well lit I didn't want to make a note of this because this is something I would want to know so hopefully it's something that you want to know too um these like little sack of linens um do come with four pillows total so basically each person if this cabin was full would get one pillow each yeah so if you want more than that bring some extra um and this is like the quality of the blanket it, it actually doesn't seem bad and everything seems like really clean the um the the sheets and stuff seem really clean but i just wanted to show like thickness and stuff because i get cold easy and i like to know the thickness of my blanket that i'm going to be using um so hopefully that is helpful to you if you wanted to know about the linens at jetty park campground all right friends that's going to do it for today we are off to bed pretty early but there's a good reason yes so you'll just have to tune in tomorrow to see what that's gonna be super excited about it but i really enjoyed um our camping experience here i mean it was just one night but um i would definitely like highly recommend like if you're gonna be sailing out of port canaveral especially like come a couple nights early come camp come get a cabin um watch the ships go out and help get you excited for your yeah. own cruise <laughs> mattress is actually really comfortable uh -huh. too it's, not, it's like that's not surprising a brick board a brick board <laughs> brick board a board made of bricks yeah it's not like that it actually has some cushion to it so that's positive and um yeah i would definitely 1000 percent do this again absolutely we will see you back up and early tomorrow morning but until then from jetty park campground we're signing off Happy travels! Remember that cruise mapper app we talked about earlier? Sneak peek! Good night!